everyone to the um, Arts Club for this week. Um, I'm going to um, be explaining how to use um, IC interactive websites, uh, or basically the, the websites we make for uh, visualizing gene expression data. Um, as always, from the public Arts Club, on their column G, um, you can find the slides and material with some of the, um, basically, it's a collection of links of what I'll be showcasing today. So that's what I have already open on this other tab. Um, so the point today is to uh, focus mostly from a user perspective, not really on how to make um, IC apps, uh, websites, and things like that. Um, uh, but I mean, but if you wanted to, here's the code for installing the packages, as well as links to the previous videos we made um, on IC, uh, more from the coder perspective than the, the user perspective. So um, uh, just to get started, let's open one of these apps. Um, there's quite a few of them. Um, so this app over here has um, is a demonstration that the authors of IC made using uh, a data set called the Allen data set. Um, okay, so an IC app will look mostly like this, where you have um, a few different rows. Each row can have one or more um, panels. Um, um, and as a user, we'll, we're going to be able to configure them. Now, these panels can show, for example, uh, reduced dimensions. So that could be PCA, UMAP, TSNE. Um, they can also show expression of an individual gene under what is called the feature assay plot. That's because feature is synonym, which, I mean, gene is a, is a class of a feature, but you could also be visualizing, let's say, transcript level data, where like then at that point, a transcript would be a feature uh, or other types of data. Um, you have something called the row data table, which tells you a bit more about the different um, genes. Um, this one in this example is fairly um, sparse. Um, we have other things that we don't use as much, but you can um, you have with IC, which is like you want to visualize any information about your samples, um, any metrics. So, for example, let's say you have the mitochondria percent um, um, map for each read. You can visualize that on their column data. Uh, the column data is synonym with like sample metadata. Um, um, now, a sample assay plot. Um, this one is where you want to look at, for example, um, uh, all of the all of the genes uh, for a given uh, sample. Um, um, again, we don't have a lot of use cases for it, but it's uh, available there. Um, and you will also have the, the the heat map where we can visualize multiple genes. Um, well, so most of the times we're going to be using the reduced dimension plot as well as the feature assay plot. Um, and um, while we have these plots over here, you can see that they have some interactiveness where if I mouse over, I get the sample IV. Um, um, so you can see like, okay, which is this low value over here, for example. Um, what we want to do as users is configure, for example, the visual parameters. Um, so a lot of times we'll want to, um, um, for example, on, on the feature assay plot, on the data parameters, we can have um, our samples categorized by something on the x-axis. So the information, we, we're going to get it from the column data. So this is where we have our uh, information about the different samples. And um, I'm not as familiar with this data set, but let's say here they have a primary type. Um, so now we can look at expression across primary type uh, for a particular gene. Uh, let's say we want to change the input gene. We can go on the y-axis feature and search for it. Or um, a lot of times what we do is just have the selection come from row data table one. Um, so that way we click on a different row over here that updates the feature assay plot. Um, uh, we could add some color to it, so we can color it also by some variable on our column data. So let's color it by, I don't know, secondary type. 
um, let's say. Um, so now we have this plot over here. Let's say we want to download it for later. At the top right corner, there's this little um, down arrow icon with, um, uh, I don't know what it is underneath it. Um, but from it, we can say like, oh, let's download panel output. And so I'm going to select none of them and just say, hey, I want to download the feature assay plot one. Um, this will um, um, download a file over here. Well, downloading a secure file, it is um, from change a bit. Um, so we download a zip file. Inside of it, we have a PDF. And so that way we have um, the plot that we just made. Um, cool. um, so uh, similarly, on reduce dimension plot, we can go to uh, visual parameters and say like, hey, we want to uh, color everything. So we're color by, we're going to say, let's color by column data. And again, we can say like, in this case, let's color by primary type. Um, and now we can see the different clusters that we have. Um, this is with PCA. We go to data parameters. We can see that they also have a TSNE. Um, and um, uh, for PCA, maybe, um, oh, they only have two dimensions. Right. Uh, maybe if you want to flip the, the axis of the dimensions, you can do that here and specify which principal component you want on the x axis, which one you want on the y axis, et cetera. Um, so that's a that's the basics of it um, of uh, of controlling IC apps. Um, now uh, that one was an example data set. So um, I'm gonna um, I'll look back to all of the IC documentation later on. Um, uh, but for now, I'm going to showcase some of the ones we have made. Um, so one of the first studies where we made a lot of apps was this Tran Maynard et al. Uh, Neuron 2021 paper. Um, you might know it as our first paper where we um, generate a single nucleus RNA-seq data for five brain regions. And so uh, uh, those five brain regions were the amygdala, the DLPFC, hippocampus, nucleus accumbens, and SACC, single and anterior something cortex, uh, single cortex. Um, um, and so we have five of those apps, but we actually had data in two rounds. Um, so we have the preprint version where we had a smaller set of donors, and then uh, the final published version where we have the, the full set of donors. So this is already 10 apps you can use. Um, and so let me like open the DLPSC one. Um, and so any of these apps, they can take a bit of time to load. Um, that's because what's happening is they're deployed on something called Shiny Apps. Um, Shiny Apps is a service that we, um, we as an institute, we have a subscription for. Um, they uh, provide access to computers uh, by Amazon, uh, where we are able to host um, data. So we can see that this one is still loading. Um, and as you'll notice, the layout looks quite different from the one uh, of the example that we just saw. That's because um, you can actually configure how IC apps look. Um, and we'll, we'll see how we can do that ourselves as a user. Now, this one already has a bunch of def default visualization settings. So it has already some colors chosen uh, for looking at the different clusters of cell types. Um, it already has a heat map with a list of genes pre-selected um, and some options for that heat map. So, um, um, we have the reduced dimension plot over here on the top left. The heat map, we have it on the top right. Um, we have the row data table, which allows us to find different genes. Now, this one is a bit more complicated than the, the previous one we saw in the example, because we can now search. Um, we have the genes uh, symbols on the left. We also have the ensemble gene IDs. We have the gene biotype. Um, and we have... Um, uh, um, some variables that Matt Tran calculated, which is the proportion uh, of these gene expressed in different of the uh, in each of the different cell types. So there's a cluster called inhibitory B. Um, so you wanted to find, like, let's say the the gene that is expressed uh, a gene that is expressed in all of excitatory. Well, I'm a bit sorry. Um, yeah, excitatory B B. 
I can just click on it. And that gene turned out to be KAZN. Uh, the next one is um, MYT1L. So like this allows you to do a bit of like data-driven exploration instead of like looking just at um, uh, maybe genes that you found in a different paper, et cetera. Um, but let's say like, oh, um, I'm interested in SNAP25. So you can just type the name. That's going to filter the list of genes to those that contain the words SNAP25. There's two of them, SNAP25 itself, as well as an antisense. If the gene symbol doesn't show up uh, for your gene of interest, you might want to search it with an assembled gene ID. Um, but that's because a single assembled gene ID can have one or more symbols attached to it. Um, and we're using the, the one that the database provides to us. Um, but that might not be the one that you know the gene by. Um, if it still doesn't show up, that means that um, the gene wasn't expressed in this data set. Uh, it didn't pass the minimum expression filters. Um, but in this case, we see SNAP25. I can click on it. Now we can see the expression of SNAP25 on the feature assay plot across a bunch of the clusters that we have, since we, they're already uh, grouped by on the x-axis by, um, by the um, by the cluster, the, and their color are also by by that cluster variable too. We see this nice set of violin plots. So we can see that SNAP25 on log counts um, is um, so sort of like no, log normalized counts. It's expressed mostly on excite A, B, C, D, E, F, also in heap A, B, C, and D, and E. Um, a little bit in F in some of the cells. We don't have actually a lot of cells for F. Um, then it does, it's not expressed in macrophages. Well, it's mostly not expressed. There's a few like outliers, microglium, mural cell cells, and oligodendrocytes. Um, there is a bit of more expression in OPCs and uh, not on the T cells. So um, um, this kind of makes sense since SNAP25 is supposed to be a neuronal marker. So we do see it expressed in almost all of the um, inhibitory and excitatory neuron clusters, except maybe inhibitory F, which is a little bit on and off. Um, and it's um, not supposed to be as expressed in glial cells, which is what we see also here. Now, marker genes have, we can, we already have a full video about them and how like um, there's many definitions of marker genes, uh, but normally it's like has higher expression in, in in the group that you're interested in compared to other groups. Um, cool. So I'm going to stop searching for SNAP25. And we can see here that there's 33,000 um, entries. Uh, that's the number of genes that are present in this data set. Um, that's not all of them. In the annotation, there's around 60,000. Um, so um, there's definitely half or so of the genes that were not expressed in, in this data set. Um, cool. So uh, um, a lot of times as a user, we, we, uh, you wouldn't need to configure anything really um, if you're just interested in searching your gene, looking at the violin plots across the different clusters that we have. Uh, but of course, if you want to change some things, um, you're able to. So let's say under data parameters, um, in this case, we only have the log counts. Um, but maybe you, in some cases, we might have the raw counts themselves, then on normalized counts if you want to look at them. Um, uh, uh, maybe you want to see, like, hey, is, is there a donor effect? So maybe you want to um, change the x axis to make it by donor. Uh, see, so if we're still coloring by cell type, you see like this whole, um, you know, uh, rainbow. <laughs> Uh, but um, that could be something that you could check. Um, this one, there was a uh, batch processing effect. Um, so you could also see that, you know, it's um, making, um, provide some differences here. Sex, if we had um, uh, donors from more than one sex. In this case, they were all males for this DLPFC data. Um, um, so I'll return it to, to um, uh, to cell type. Um, um, on the visual parameters, maybe you will, something you do want to do is the size. Maybe the point size is too small over here on those violin plots. So let's make it twice as big. Um, 
So maybe that helps us see like these inhibitory Fs that were a bit harder to see before. Uh, like we made the points a bit bigger. Um, so there's a few of those things you might want to do. Um, now on the reduced dimension plot, um, um, I think the, the most common case as a user is that maybe you want to change the type of data. So here we have PCA. Let's go to um, let's look at the TSNE. Um, um, so like that's how that TSNE looks like here. Uh, and maybe you're like, hey, I don't actually like these needs. Maybe I like UMAPs more. You can also look at the UMAP. Um, so this is um, uh, uh, something you probably want to do as a user. Um, now, some more advanced. Um, okay, uh, sorry. If, before I get to the more advanced stuff, um, the heat map. This one is like not that easy to use um, interactively, but like. What you can do is if you go to data parameters, you can edit the feature names, and it's going to provide you a list here. And so you, you, you can type other gene names. So let me replace this last one by MOBP. Um, um, you can click on validate names, and that will check whether like the name you type is actually valid with the data set that you have. Sometimes we make the IC apps uh, using assemble gene IDs. So that is a bit more tricky. You need to know the assemble gene ID for the genes you want to have. So I'll just apply that. Um, and so now we can see MOVP over here at the bottom. Uh, and we see a lot of expression for it, um, mostly on this purple cell type, which is the oligos, uh, which makes sense. And then we also see the donors. It's expressed also in the three different donors that we have in this LPIC data set. Um, so that's probably what you would do there. You could also say, like, hey, I want to cluster the rows. Um, so now you, you're going to group the genes by most similar genes. So now we see that MBP and MOBP are actually quite, uh, you know, clustered together, which makes sense. Both of them are markers for illegal dendrocytes, uh, with MBP being expressed um, more than MOBP. Um, so you could do that. Uh, there's different parameters for clustering. Um, um, on the visual parameters, maybe you want to add some annotations. So that's these color rows that we see at the top. Uh, you have to use like um, um, you know, any of the variables that we have here. So let's say we want to look at batch. Um, so now we see here the, the batch color. Ideally, you want yeah, you know your your genes to be expressed on. on uh, the cell type of interest, regardless of the donor or the batch, right? That's what you want to have, ideally. So you can make a few of these heat maps. Um, we have a short video, a five-minute video, on um, what is called uh, centering and scaling. Um, um, and so we uh, showcase why you probably do want to center and scale. Um, um, and that's because that can help you if um, um, well, um, this one seems to be a little bit broken, the color over here. Um, but centering and scaling is useful if you want to visualize differences across genes that have different means of expression. Um, so. Um, uh, the, the short video talks a little bit more about, about why you want to be doing that in general. Um, so in, in some of our more recent IC apps, we already enable that by default. So you don't have to, as a user, find like where, where you can change that. Okay. Um, so let's say you want to do a bit more advanced things. So over here on the top right, there's this um, little canvas icon. So we can organize the panels. And so this part, you can be like, hey, I want to add a panel that we didn't have before. So let's say I want to add the column data table panel. Um, um, then next, uh, each row has a width of 12. So uh, I could make, for example, the reduced dimension plot a little bit narrower and give the, uh, the heat map a bit more space. Maybe we even want to make it taller. Um, so let's make it um, 900 pixels tall. Um, so once um, 
Let's I apply those settings so we can see that now the complex heat map has a lot more space. The PCA plot has a lot less. Um, and so now we can see a lot better what's happening on that, on that heat map. Um, um, and since I added a column data uh, panel, it shows up all the way over here on the bottom. Um, um, so this is like, hey, if you want to add something that the default settings don't actually let you see, you can add it back. Um, and you can change the, the ratio of things. Um, so uh, particularly changing the, the size of things the, um, can be useful if, um, if you want, mostly want to focus on, on one type of plot, right? Um, so let's say this feature assay plot we think is like too narrow. We want to make it wider. We'll go all the way to the top, organize panels, feature assay plot. We're going to make it um, a width of 12, the maximum width. And I'm going to move it to the last row again. Um, and column data table will make it also width of six. So that way we have um, each row has a width of 12 um, to begin with, apply the settings, and now we see this, this plot like super wide, um, which um, since we also increased the, the point size, the default was one, right? Um, but since we increased it to two, um, now I can see, um, you know, we have a lot more screen space to, to see what maybe we're interested in, right? Um, and you could even like mouse over and be like, hey, what was that cell? <laughs> you know, is that a weird cell? <laughs> and then, then later on, you could ask more specific questions about the data. Be like, hey, what's happening with this cell over here? Should it be maybe not a macrophage, but should it be something else, right? Uh, so now you see, like, you can actually see the, the idea of that, of that uh, cell. Uh, <clears throat> um, oh. um, so, uh, um, yeah, that's that's this IC app for the DLPFC data from um, Trend et al. Um, 2021. But we have quite a bit more. Um, I didn't actually get time to list everything that we have. But um, um, uh, from um, a 2023 study, um, um, a spatial transcriptomics uh, study uh, that also has single nucleus RNA seq. We have a bunch of IC apps, so they're uh, represented by these like um, these eyes icon um, emoji, and so you'll notice that we have three of them for pseudo bulk um, um, spatial data, and we also have one for a big um, single nucleus RNA seq data set with nineteen samples. Um, so we just saw one that had only three. This has like um, um, almost seven times more, or, well, six point three percent times more uh, data. Um, the silver bulk for the, uh, um, for the spatial data can also be useful to load. So I'm, I'm loading both in behind the scenes. Um, um, they take a little bit of time to, to load because it's, um, um, once we have the, the machine, it has to load all of the data uh, for each of these um, studies. This one that has the 19 samples is going to take maybe a bit longer to load. Um, right. So the pseudoball one load faster. Um, so in this case, we already selected a few genes we wanted to highlight um, uh, on this heat map. You can see that the color scale already says that data is log count center and scaled. Uh, so as I mentioned before, um, uh, on newer apps, this is something we're already doing by default. Um, and so, Across the spatial domains, we can, uh, let's say, for example, MOVP. Oh, this is case sensitive, so I need to type it the right way. Um, um, right, we can see like which are the spatial domains where MOVP is expressed a bit more. So, spatial domain six has a bit higher expression of MOVP. Let's look at MVP. Um, um, it's also spatial domain six. So that's like the white matter uh, spatial domain. Um, um, and so like PCP4 is supposed to be a layer five marker gene. We can look at it. Uh, probably spatial domain four is the one that's maybe layer five related. Um, um, so this we're looking at the 
at the spatial data that we have from the LPFC. Uh, we can go to data parameters. Instead of looking at PCA, we can maybe, uh, well, here I actually have two versions of PCA, uh, but like let's look at multi-dimensional scaling. You can see like this reduced dimension plot. Um, so um, that's the suitable data. The single nucleus RNA seq um, data here we made a by you can see like we changed the, the aspect ratios of things. Here we made a, the, the heat map a lot wider because we do have a ton of cells. Um, you know, we this is data from 19 uh, donors. So uh, I think we had around 60,000 cells after QC. Um, so there's a ton of them here. Um, there's a bunch of um, uh, here we have the cell type layer label, which is um, in this case, in this single cytosine data set, we have cell types. Then we have cell types that we try to assign to the LPFC layers. So uh, there's two different variables for that. Let's say we want to change that under um, um, visual parameters. Uh, we have like the broad cell types. Um, we could also see. Um, so, like, so this is quite a bit of data. It takes a while to up, update the heat map. Um, right. While that's thinking, uh, be, below here we have um, again the the cell types that we have assigned to layers already. Um, so let's look at PCP four. Um, well, actually, that's supposed to be. Um, like a layer five, yeah. So we do see it with more expression on on, on the excitatory neurons that we assign to layer five. So that's kind of nice to see there. Um, uh, but maybe you want to see it instead of, instead of um, the cell types assigned by layer. Maybe you want to see like just the broad cell types. Um, um, uh, so that changes the x-axis. But um, um, boom. Uh, other data parameters, we have the, the UMAP shown by default in this case, but we also have like a um, TSNE. Um, this plot was used quite a bit on the paper. It actually includes this uh, gray um, cluster, which is, um, oh, it doesn't have a label at that point, sorry. Um, um, So type HC probably has a label. So since there's too many of them, uh, <laughs> it's pretty, since we have, we have too many categories, uh, it's already making it into like a, a numeric color over here. Um, anyways, um, yeah, you get an idea of what, what you can um, visualize and explore with these, with these apps. Um, so overall, we mostly use IC for bulk RNA-seq, single nucleus or a single cell RNA-seq, as well as pseudo-bulk, either single cell, single nucleus, or visium data. Uh, we have this for a few uh, published papers. I have here also an example with like bulk RNA-seq data from Recount Tree that are using classes. Um, we uh, probably have over, I want to say over 30 IC apps. Um, available already. Um, we don't have a, a location where we list all of them. Um, and um, uh, some of them are for projects that are in progress that we haven't uh, published the data yet. Um, so you can't really find them unless you guess the URL. Um, um, cool. So, um, um, so that's a bit of the IC apps we have. The authors of IC have this website with like listed other examples. So they explain like what is the Allen data set a little bit, have some data using TCGA, the Cancer Genome Atlas, this P PBMC uh, 4K data set. So they have a few examples over here with the links to them if you want to explore all other, other data sets. Um, the IC paper itself uh, is from a few years ago now. It's, um, uh, what year was it? Um, 18? Um, let's look on the site. 
Um, oh yeah, here. Oh, sorry, too. Thank you. Um, and so, like the paper itself is a bit more on the coding side of things. You just have a figure here trying to explain, like how are all the panels connected. Um, the authors of IC actually won a competition um, for their, their technical pro um, their technical prowess. Is that how you say? It? Uh, for when they made IC. Um, among uh, developers of Shiny apps. Um, there's a lot, like the internal code is very complicated, um, very powerful too. Um, the official uh, landing page for IC on Bioconductor is this one. Um, if you look at the vignettes or the tutorials, they have quite a few of them. They're mostly um, um, tailored towards um, uh, coders. Um, the user's guide, Let's try to explain a little more of um, um, what are the options that you see in the interface. Uh, but again, this is mostly written for people that know R and things like that. It's talking about like some of the internal packages that they use and how, how they use them. So for, for a user, it's like maybe not as informative. Um, 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 they do have a video guide, uh, but I couldn't find the, the the, the default app where this is enabled, um, like a quick tour over here. Um, it's only enabled for the example Allen data set, uh, but I couldn't find one already um, with just that data. Because um, uh, that, that little tour guide can um, showcase um, like the different buttons, how you can configure things. Um, so I, I couldn't find it right now. It probably exists somewhere. Um, the GitHub uh, home for this project, um, uh, if under functionalities, we can see here uh, like the list of functionalities, although I already demonstrated quite a few of them, um, but it's, it also has a links here to some of those examples that we saw um, on, the, on the other link for the 2018 uh, demos. Um, cool. Um, so with that, I'm going to stop the recording and um, yeah, just wish you uh, good luck using these apps.